there's my handy dandy auto dod. And over here, we're about to unpack a thousand pieces of brass and some new ammo boxes. So let's get started. What we've got going here is I've got a thousand pieces of brass I need to turn and I need to get it prepped. Now, in the past, I've talked about turning brass and, uh, you know, the reality is I really would prefer to turn it when it's been fired. However, a thousand pieces of brass means a thousand bullets and, you know, roughly eight pounds of powder and a thousand primers and, and that starts adding up. So this batch of brass, I'm actually going to expand and I'm going to turn virgin and then shoot it. And I don't think I'm going to see any negative effects from this. Uh, I know that there are plenty of people who do it both ways. But I think that under this circumstance, it's just going to be more effective this way. So we are going to unpack all of these. Let me get the rest of them out. They've been sitting here in storage for a while. And you're probably wondering why am I doing this when I have brass that I've been using? And that's true. And most of the brass I have is at, oh, maybe five or six thousandths, or five or six firings, rather. And that still leaves a ton of firings. I probably have at least another six or seven firings in my experience so far. Maybe more, I don't know. But there's nothing worse than having to prep brass when you need it. So I like to stay ahead of that. And with roughly six firings on the brass, it's time to get all of this turned so that when I'm ready, it's there for me. And this is gonna be a multi-step process. The first thing is we're gonna to need to cut open all these boxes and then we're going to run it through the Dillon and it is going to expand them. Now you're probably gonna ask, what kind of lube am I using? What am I doing? I will just tell you, I don't lube. I don't do anything. I'm running uh, Eric's Expander Mandrel. It is a coated, uh, a coated mandrel. And I have zero problems. I've done, I can't even tell you how many I've done without lube, but quite a few. Um, virgin brass, I've done like expanding up from 6.5, I've done, oh, I think it's probably 700 to 1,000, somewhere in there. And then I always expand without lube anyway, or, you know, when I'm doing my normal sizing process, and, and I've never had a problem. But, the bigger problem most people are going to have is expanding 6.5 up to 7. Now, keep in mind, the Dillon is exerting a little extra force than my hand would be able to and a little more consistently. And I've been really, really happy with running Virgin Brass without lube through it. Again, provided you have some sort of a coated mandrel or a carbide mandrel or something like that, um, I, wouldn't ha I wouldn't hesitate to do it. If I was using just tool steel, it's probably going to gall pretty quickly. Uh, it's a lot of pressure on, on regular tool steel. It would probably still work, uh, but you, you just run into potentially problems with it. So coated or carbide would be my choice without any kind of lube. And the other reason is it's just a pain to lube up a thousand pieces of brass. I don't want to sit there with a Q-tip and, you know, put lube inside the necks on all of them. And, and it's just, I don't care. Uh, it's, I bet you dollars to donuts out of these thousand. I don't, um. I don't have any issues. The other problem or the other thing that I'm going to run into is once these are turned and then I load them, I'm obviously going to have to anneal them afterwards. So these are going to be in their turned fired state for annealing, which I'll have to Aztec test. I always, every time I have new brass, I always put a new test on it. Um, even though they might only vary a little bit, I want to make sure it's as accurate as possible. And then I also want to be able to prime. So the process is going to be we're going to run these through the Dillon. We're going to expand them. We're going to put them in the auto dod. We're going to turn them. And then we're going to run them all back through the Dillon where it gets hit with the expander one more time and is going to prime them and run a brush inside. So just sort of, it's a cleanup process in the neck and then priming them. And then I will have a thousand pieces ready to go whenever I need them. The only difference between this and anything that I would normally fire is obviously these are uh, virgin inside. So they're just, they're clean necks and I usually shoot dirty necks with a little bit of carbon in them. So that's a little bit of a, a fluctuation, but it's not that big a deal. And when I bring this brass out, I'm going to be testing it anyway. So I'll, I'll account for that, that variance right there. This video brought to you by Bullet Central.
So let's go ahead and get unpacked here. I guess I need to get a knife. By the way, if you don't know how to tell if this is older brass or not, Lapua no longer sells their brass in these blue plastic boxes. So this is last year's stock. Uh, like I said, I've had it. I've had it for a while. But uh, anything new comes in a, uh, I think it's like a cardboard box and they're all individually uh, stacked up. up a little bit and then this one here I already opened and the reason it's open is because prior to filming I've gone ahead and set up and just verified that my auto dod was working correctly so I took whatever it was four or five pieces out expanded them made sure everything was turning right before we started doing this but this is my open box right here so we're gonna put that one aside and we have that now over here I want to be able to keep this brass uh, you know it's gonna be uh, nice and primed it's going to you know be run through the expander so the necks are all going to be beautiful I don't necessarily want to just plow it back into the boxes while I'm waiting to use it so I got me some of these uh, Frankfurt Arsenal boxes and these are 50 count boxes compared to the 100 round boxes that I normally use and the reason is honestly just the cost uh, these are only like five bucks a piece or something like that maybe six bucks a piece and those hundred round boxes are anywhere from I don't know I found them probably as cheap as eighteen dollars and since this is simply a holding pattern for me uh, this is gonna be great and I do like you know ultimately I will use these for the range too just because they're a little bit smaller in the range bag than the big hundred pack but right now this is gonna be for putting all my brass back in and I'll be labeling these uh, by box and these are all the same lot, so this is all the same lot of brass, but just for academic exercise, I'm going to be labeling each box, uh, you know, uh, like box one, and then there'll be two of them that are box one, box two, box three, box four, and so on. I honestly don't think it makes a difference. I know people that are better shooters than me have said it really doesn't matter, and it's mostly a head game, and, and that's largely true, uh, but at this point, it's not that much work for me to do. And so that's what I'm going to do. So let's get these unpacked. I do like the um, I do like the Frankfurt Arsenal because they do have the hinge that pops off. And in case you are looking for, because it's hard to find Magnum boxes that that work well. And I like these. This is their what number was this? Five eleven. So it's the their five eleven box, and it's made for three hundred Win Mag and some other stuff. And uh, I don't know. They seem to they seem to be nice. I, I shot with them. This box I shot at the range the other night, and I liked how it how it worked. So I'm just going to unpack all these because as I turn the brass and finish it off, we will then be putting it into these boxes just to store in my area here. And I may not pull this brass out for six months, or you know maybe I'll do some testing with it next month. I don't know. I just I hate not having brass ready to go. It's like barrels. You always, at least in my position, you always wanna have barrels ready to go. You always wanna have brass ready to go. There is nothing worse than having to sit on your time because you don't have it, have it ready to go, so. Same thing with bullets, like sorting and pointing bullets. That's never the thing you want to do, you know, a couple days before a match when you're loading. Hmm. 
these will also store better. So the, the 100 round MTM boxes that I use, they don't fit particularly well in my bench drawers. They, they're too long to fit three in a row. I don't want to stand them up on edge. And even if I did, you can still really only get maybe four in there. They're just an odd size to try to store anything in inside of my bench. Whereas these store very nicely. I measured them out and, and made sure and these will all pack away nicely so they are ready to go when I need them. So there we have boxes to hold a thousand. We have a thousand. Let's get turning. Now it's all about getting the brass ready to go into the neck turner. So there's a couple ways that this can be achieved. As we've said, you can simply expand the necks on, so this is 6.5 PRC, neck it up to seven, and then just load it, shoot it, and then turn them after the first firing. Or in this case, like what I'm doing, I am going to actually be necking them up, and that is going to be with my expander mandrel here. And this tool head is already set with uh, a brush before and a brush after. There's no reason for me to not just leave those in. It doesn't hurt anything. So we're going to be uh, expanding uh, with this. So then we're going to run all the brass through. Now, I will say there's a couple ways also to deal with the necks. Probably the most correct way, and I'll just tell you the safest way in terms of not damaging tooling or your brass or anything like that or causing headaches is to use either Imperial Wax or this is Creedmoor Brass Wax and it's sort of this, you know, thicker surfboard looking kind of wax. And I just use one of these foam tip applicators. I do find that the foam tip applicators work way better than um, like a regular Q-tip will because the cottony tip. This foam tip, you can do 10, 20 cases at a time before it wears out. It holds on really well. They don't tear up. And I can usually do, with one foam applicator, I can usually do up to about 100 pieces of brass um, before it gets, you know, cut up enough where I might want to stop and do another one. But you can buy these so cheap on Amazon, it's not even funny. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of the wax on here. We're just going to run it in the neck, and it really doesn't take much. You know, just a little bit it goes a long way, and then we're going to dump them into the hopper. The other option, and I've done this as well, is to not use any lube and use either a coated or a carbide mandrel of some kind and this works, like I've done this, I haven't had any problems, but there's a couple caveats that go along with this. The first is to make sure that as you are, um, as you're going, you can't just willy nilly throw and expect to do a thousand pieces of brass without uh, you know, maintaining it a little bit. And so what we're gonna do is every hundred pieces, I'm gonna pull out the mandrel and I'm gonna wipe it off. And that's just, you know, if there's any brass that's come off or anything that's causing any kind of problems, it's just going to keep that mandrel nice and clean and then we're going to put it back in and we're going to do the next hundred and i have found that to be very effective as well you can also use a step up method which would be to take a couple of expanders and in this case my expander is 282 but i might put in you know we've got a 65 uh, i might put in something that's in the 270 range right so that it's stepping up from uh, from your 65 up to like 270 something and then you go to 280 something and it's a little easier on the neck as you're expanding and less likely to cause a a crack in the neck which is the first problem you can have the other problem you can have if you aren't careful is if you are applying too much pressure you can actually shove the neck down into the case body and it's going to completely mess up your shoulder uh, dimensions it's going to be all kinds of headache technically there are ways to fix it but let me just tell you you don't want to go down those roads if you can help it so using some kind of a wax or lube inside the neck, number one way to go. Number two way would be to use either a carbide or a coated mandrel and to carefully monitor that to make sure you're not getting any galling or to use a step up method if you really don't wanna put any lube inside. So we're gonna run these through and then what I'm gonna do, and this is just the way I do it. It doesn't make it the right way, the best way, it just makes it the way that works for me is I'm gonna put in my sizing die and I'm gonna run all my brass back through this sizing die so i'm going to lube it up again on the outside or if you really wanted to you could lube the inside and lightly lube the outside all at once there's a lot of ways to skin this cat but i'm going to go ahead and lube everything up i'm going to run it all through my sizing die and in my particular case that's just going to help push the shoulders a little bit more in line with my chamber 
It's gonna make it a little easier to shoot the virgin brass, but it is going to constrict those necks back down because I use a 305 or 306 uh, neck bushing. So then after I've run all the bra brass through, I'm gonna pull this back out and I'm gonna run it back through this die again and that is going to expand it out and make it where it's just like it's been fired in terms of dimension and everything like that. Um, so uh, I shouldn't say make it like it's been fired because it would be a larger internal diameter, but make it like it's sized brass after it's been fired. So that is just the way that I'm doing it. Again, you can fire virgin brass and then turn it straight out of the chamber. You can fire virgin brass, size it, expand it, turn it, expand, you know, just size it and turn it. You can turn virgin brass at the you know stock diameter and then expand it. You have to play with it. You have to see what works for you. Um, there's a lot of different ways to go about this, but that is what, I, what I'm doing with this brass. Now, I'm not in a huge hurry to get this done. I'm not trying to cram it all in one day. This is a project and this is to prevent heartache and, and uh, you know more work than I need when I need this brass. So I'm probably gonna, you know, this part will be the better part of a day because this isn't a lot of manual work. This is just getting the necks lubed up, throwing them in, getting everything through, then sizing. So probably a day or two on this, I'll get everything put aside and then I'll take you over to the auto dot and show you what we do over there as soon as I'm done with all of this. We are in the middle of turning the brass and I thought I would just show this off again. So here's the process. This is the auto dod. We've got the control box over here, the, um, the actual cutting head assembly here, and then the motor assembly here. Our brass, if you remember, has been necked up, then fully sized, including the neck again, and then expanded back up. And that is going to get me as close to fired as possible. There are other ways to do this. There are people who will turn it when it is 6.5. There are people who will just expand it and turn it. Uh, I, for whatever reason, uh, have been doing a uh, expand size and expand again because that gets it really close to my actual chamber and it pushes the shoulder back just a hair. And I don't know, it just, I think it gets it closer to me uh, where I wanna be. So that's what I've been doing. So I'll fire this back up. And you can see it just takes a really nice cut, takes it down onto the shoulder, getting down on the shoulder. If you look here, if you get it down onto the shoulder, you can see it's, let's see if I can zoom in for you a little bit here, but you get it down on the shoulder here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna really help prevent that donut from coming back in the future because now as you have flow coming up, it's going to take even longer before it becomes any kind of problem. And I typically try to take just enough so that there's just the tiniest of lip down here. You can certainly go more or less depending on what your preference is, but this is how I like to do it. So we're gonna do a thousand of these. Once I'm done, I'm gonna show you the process of how I'm storing them until they are needed again. Keep in mind, this takes a little bit of time. Even with the auto dod, I average maybe half an hour, 40 minutes, depending on how fast I'm going per hundred. So, you know, I'm looking at five or six hours of work. Uh, I do spread it out over a couple of days just to make life a little bit easier on me, but you could certainly knock it out in one day if you needed to, because it is so fast and efficient. I, I, I really can't say enough about the fact that I don't think I would be turning necks if I didn't have this machine. It does make a huge difference for me. So. Uh, we're going to finish up here and then we'll get you over to the table probably in a day or two and show you what I do with the brass once it is done with this step here. And we're back at square one. We have our beautifully turned fresh off the auto dod brass. And this is something where even though the auto dod makes it easy, that does not mean that it should be fast or rushed in any way compromising because it's like doing anything. It's like painting. It's like woodworking. You know, so much of it is in the prep. You want to make sure you're doing it right. So I do take my time. I make sure that it is all coming out to dimension. I take periodic measurements, all the things that I try to talk about with it. But I do have a thousand pieces ready. I've got a thousand rounds that can be held in these boxes. And I will begin shooting this tomorrow. As I shoot it, it'll start getting stored in the ammo boxes. 
and then it's going to be ready to go after that first firing. Believe it or not, though, it does shoot really well in a virgin uh, state like this. So I'm not afraid to shoot it in a match, but I would like to fire it once before I go to something like Nationals. So with that, I guess all I can say is get out and shoot. We'll talk soon. Have a good one.